Good morning, students. I hope you are all fine, hale, and hearty, and uh, refreshed also for the second term. So let us begin with the second term. The first topic which we are going to take up for the second term is a poem. It is a beautiful poem, actually. Uh, uh, the poem the which we are going to talk about today it talks about a very very beautiful abstract component of human personality that is hope now what is hope actually we can say that it is a positive feeling inside us no it is an expectation or it is a desire Uh, for something to happen you know and uh, it is a positive feeling definitely which is inside us which helps us to sail through difficulties it is always there inside our subconscious minds you know subconscious means which we are not reminded of every day but becomes active whenever we are undergoing a bad phase like for example you know whenever we have uh, exams and papers you know we always hope something you know like paper may um, like it, paper should be easy that is one hope you know suppose we have left some chapters one or two or we've left some questions or topics so we hope that those topics should not be there in the question paper you no know? that is hope and you know this prevalent uh, present time which we are undergoing the corona phase of our lives you know it is we are all sustaining just because of hope you know everybody hopes that first hope is we should not get that disease okay and god forbid if we get it at least we should be able to come out of it hale and hearty and nobody should get uh, affected by it no that is a hope so i hope you have understood see another hope i am saying so you might have understood what is actually hope and uh, the poem which we are going to take let me introduce you to that take up is uh, the hope is the thing with feathers it is written by emily dickinson now if we talk about emily dickinson she was an american poet no and she wrote many many poems but you know the bad part the worst part was that most of her poems they got published only after her death only a few about a dozen poems you know they got published when she was alive rest of the poems they got published where after her death um that they, they were they got published they were noticed by her sister and she got them published so let us come to the poem hope is the thing with feathers let me just tell you in short what this poem talks about i'll give you a short idea of the poem now in this poem the poet has used the word hope as a metaphor now let me tell you what is a metaphor now metaphor is when you compare one thing with something else like we do it in similes but in similes you know the, those things they are related it, to each other or they have something in common but in com- in a metaphor we compare two totally different things we they don't have anything in common but the poet is you comparing them or using them to be together to bring out a very unique common feature you know something which is not common but to bring out one point so here the word hope it is used as a metaphor and the poet is comparing the word hope to something with feathers and we all know what is some what is that something with feathers of course the bird so the poet is comparing the word hope to a bird now see how totally different these two things are hope is something uh, inside us no it's a f- kind of feeling we can say an expectation in us and feathers and birds no they are totally different they have nothing in common but the poet is comparing hope with met, uh, with the birds because she wants to say that hope can go up to any heights like a bird okay so that is why here the hope is used ha- uh, as a metaphor and 
the hope is used as a metaphor and is compared to a strong willed bird so what what kind of bird strong willed which has got a strong determination strong willed bird that lives within the human soul and sings no matter what the circumstances are through this poem the poet reminds us about the power of hope and how little it asks from us the poet talks about how hope has been useful to us in times of difficulty and has never asked for anything in return so we can say that this poem is a kind of hymn of praise him you all know a prayerful song we say so it's a kind of hymn of praise written to honor the human capacity for hope so i hope you got some idea again my hope so i expect that you might have understood some you might have got some idea about what the poem is okay so first we'll go through the reading of the poem and after that we'll con- come to the explanation so i hope you have the book with you children please open your book and open this chapter hope is the thing with feathers and let us read it together hope is the thing with feathers that perches in the soul and sings the tune with the words without the words and never stops at all and sweetest in the gale is heard and sour must be the storm that could abash the little bird that kept so many warm i have heard it in the chilliest land and on the strangest sea yet never in extremity it asked a crumb of me so i hope you found this poem very sweet and very beautiful no very nicely written poem very nicely expressed so let us start with the first paragraph the first two lines hope is the thing with feathers so the speaker defines the word hope as a feathered creature or the hope and the poet is comparing the hope the word hope with birds feathered creature and which dwells inside the human spirit this is the second line it's written that perches in the soul underline the word perches perches means sits no perches the birds they perch on the branch of a tree so here hope is such kind of a bird that perches in the human soul inside our spirit okay now next line and sings the tune without the words and never stops at all so the poet says that this feathery thing sings a wordless tune not stopping under any kind of circumstances okay so the poet says now hope never sings na we just hope we just feel it we just imagine or we just expect but here because the poet is comparing the word hope to a bird so a bird sings so the poet is saying it sings but it does not have any words because expectations you know they don't have any words so the poet says that this bird the word the hope bird it it sings the tune but which is without any words and in the next line the poet says it never stops at all so whatever the circumstances come especially the worst circumstances the bad circumstances the difficult circumstances it never stops it keeps on flying and rather it flies flies better and higher during the difficult times so let us come to this next paragraph and sweetest in the gale is heard and sore must be the storm that could abash the little bird that kept so many 
warm so the next line and sweetest in the gale is heard so the poet says that its tune the sound of the t- the this bird hope it sounds best when we are in difficult times when it is heard in fierce winds actually the word gale please underline it it's already given in the book the gale means storm so during a storm here the word gale is used for difficult time that you can write down gale is difficult time tough time so during the tough times the sound of this bird hope it sounds it appears sweetest to us and sore must be the storm and see is uh, the poet says that it only stops during a sore storm sore means very very bad storm very very difficult circumstance so only an incredibly severe storm could stop this bird from singing so look at the second line the sore must be the storm that could abash the little bird so sore must be that means the storm it must be incredibly fierce very very bad only that type of storm can abash this little bird abash means destroy or uh, diminish this little bird or stop this little bird from singing otherwise it is always there with us we are always hoping for better but maybe in life there can be some circumstances which are so bad that we are like when we get some results or something like that so maybe only in such circumstances this hope dies this bird does not sing otherwise it's always always singing that kept so many warm so the poet says that hope is the bird that has kept so many people warm here the word warm, the word warm means hopeful or positive or we can say comfortable so i hope this paragraph is clear now we come on to the last paragraph i have heard it in the chilliest land and on the strangest sea so the poet says or the speaker has heard the birds singing in the coldest of places and on the weirdest of seas so here the chilliest land means the most most worst place no and strangest sea means the weirdest of the circumstances okay so underline chilliest lands here the word chilliest land mean most difficult circumstances or the worst circumstances and the strangest sea means the very weird circumstances which we cannot even imagine but uh, yet sorry yet never in extremity it asked a crumb of me so the poet says but in my experience even in the most ex cream of situations this bird hope has never asked anything in return so here the word crumb means has crumb actually the birds they ask for crumbs they eat crumbs we we, we give them crumbs of um, some food to eat so here because the poet has compared the word hope to a bird so he uses the word crumb here but it, this line actually means that this hope is always there with us in extreme of our circumstances in extreme of our difficulty and in turn it never asks anything from us it never uh, demands anything from us so i hope this poem is ve- uh, clear to you so we can say in the end that through this poem the poet wants us to understand the value of hope okay it is something that helps us to make it through the most difficult of circumstances so let us not take hope for granted you know let us hold on to it through our rough times because it is going to fly us to a safer place
so whenever we'll be in difficult circumstances it is only hope which is going to sail us through that bad times and fly us to a better place so goodbye for now and you please children try read this poem again and try to do the question answers and when we'll discuss them later thank you